Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class. Today we're looking at Psalm 119, verses 49, right through to 56. Listen to what it says. Remember your word to your servant, in which you gave me hope. So here he is asking the Lord, this is Ezra talking, and he says, Lord, please, Remember your word. I am your servant. I am the follower of you. And the one thing that you have given me in all of these things, Lord, is hope. Isn't it great to know that you have hope? Now, hope is based upon faith. You know that everything's going to be okay because of the simple fact is that you have the love of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, These three remain, faith, hope, and and love. But the greatest of these is love. When you have the love of God working in your life and situation, it gives you faith and hope in the future that you have in God. Then he goes on to say, this is Ezra, this is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise gives me life. He says, when I'm in those times of affliction, those trials, those tribulations, those circumstances that are almost beyond my uh, capacity to understand or even endure, he says, your promise gives me life. When I'm sitting in that place of pain, when I'm sitting in that place where I don't understand what is happening, why you've allowed this to happen, I still know this, that you are the one who's given me a promise. Now, what is some of the promises God gives you? For example, God promises that he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to endure, but with a temptation, a means of escape. Another promise is, he is the Lord that healeth us. The other promise that I want to give you today is the fact that uh, the Lord promises in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20, He says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These are wonderful promises for the, from the Word of God. He says, The insolent utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. Again, here is uh, Ezra reminding himself and us. He says, there are people who are going to put you down. There are people who are going to mock and scoff for your faith. But the reality is, he says, I will not turn away. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. I have a faith and a hope in my God. When I gave my life to you, you, uh, you say, Lord, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you either because you made the promise that you're going to be with me, so I am going to follow you. That was the decision that uh, Ezra had made. He understood the problems that people face all the time. People are constantly being bombarded by all the things of this world. The enemy wants to rob, kill, and destroy us of every blessing. But you know what? We need to make a decision that we're going to serve the Lord. We need to be like Joshua. In Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, faith is a decision. You decide to serve the Lord. It doesn't just happen. God doesn't come along and say, oh, you know, you can, you can, no, you make the decision. Then he says, when I think of your rules of old, ah, I take comfort in you, Lord. You see, the Word of God is a powerful thing, and it's been around a long time. And when Ezra was thinking about the Word of God, the things that God was saying to him, he says, I take comfort in that fact. He says, hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked who forsake your law. He says, I, I think about those individuals who walk away from your law, and something inside of me just snaps, and I, ca I can't fathom why they would do that. He says... You know, when someone forsakes the law, when someone turns away from the things of Christ, you know what we should be doing? We should be angry, not with them, but with the devil who was able to succeed in taking them away. And then what we need to do is we need to pray. Pray with fervency. Don't ever let go of the promise of Acts 16.31 that says, not only shall you be saved, but your household as well. And continue to pray, not only for your household, but your, for your friends who have walked away from the things of the Lord. We should be angry and say, Lord, we're going to keep fighting for them. Folks, we need to fight for our loved ones and for our friends. He says, your statutes he says, have been my songs in the house of my sojourning. He says, what I love to do is I love to quote your word. 
I love to sing your word. That's what the Psalms is really all about. David wrote all those wonderful Psalms, and uh, others as well wrote the Psalms. And these be these are wonderful um, meditations in song, wonderful thoughts in song that we can sing every day. What, like, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He said, these are the so the, these are the songs of my soldier as long as i am going forth in this life and he understood he was a pilgrim passing through this is not his home and folks i want to remind you that this earth is not your home you have a city waiting for you whose maker and builder is god this is not the best that there is now i know that there are some religious groups who say you're going to come back and inherit this earth and you know that that and you know what folks you need to understand something you and i have a greater inheritance, a better inheritance than anything that we could ever possibly get on this planet. He goes on to say, I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your life. He says, Lord, when I'm sleeping or when I'm awake at night, he says, I meditate, I think about your word. In those night watches of the night, when everything is quiet and your brain is slowly, slowly slowing down, Think about the Word of God. Think about what God has spoken to your heart. And for a moment, just thank Him for the wonderful things He has done. The, the salvation that He has given you. The healing. The peace that passes all understanding. The love. And so many other things. He says, Bless, this blessing has fallen to me. And you know what? I will keep your precepts. He says, Lord, today I thank you just for who you are and the many blessings that you have bought, brought into our lives and situations. And he says, and I've made a determination, I'm going to keep your precepts. You see, we should always have an attitude of gratitude. We should be walking around with thanksgiving in our hearts. Folks, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have eternal and abundant life. The thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give it to us life and more abundantly. And we should be thanking him for that. All the blessings that Lord, the Lord has given us. You know, there's an old song that says, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. You will be surprised what God has done. And so today, like Ezra, he says, I will keep your precepts. I will look at your word, and I will thank you for it. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.